This is the Emergency Medical Minute. I'm going to talk to you about uh, syncope. We, and when we see patients with syncope, we've got to figure out if it's dangerous or not. A lot of it's, most of it. The vast majority is not dangerous. Things like basovagal syncope, but there are a few cases, um, especially cardiac dysrhythmias, aortic dissections, the rare subarachnoid hemorrhage type patient. Uh, one of them that we encounter not infrequently, but not clear as to the exact prevalence is pulmonary embolism. So there's a study that uh, looked at uh, a bunch of patients in Canada and U.S., 17 different hospitals, prospective study, over 9,000 patients, a little bit different than the methodologies because the Canadians looked at, at people up to uh, as young as 16. The American study was 60 and older. Uh, Canadian study excluded presyncope and the U.S. didn't, but uh, what, it, what they found out is that uh, pulmonary embolism uh, actually in these 9,000 patients when they looked at a 30-day adverse outcome and trying to find out if these patients really had pulmonary embolism was only about 0.4% of all the syncopal patients. That means 59 out of the over 9,000 patients had a pulmonary embolism and only four of them died. Um, the, the, the whole uh, gist of that is that we probably shouldn't be going looking for pulmonary embolism as a cause for syncope if the patient has appropriate symptoms, shortness of breath, chest pain, hemoptysis, risk factors, then yes, it's reasonable to do the workup. Just like uh, uh, a study that was done previously that looked at, is it reasonable to do CT for every syncope? And the answer is no. Uh, that's very low yield, very uncommonly uh, finds results or uh, findings that, that relate to the condition or even unexpected conditions. So bottom line, pulmonaryism, life-threatening potential cause of syncope, but very rare. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course, our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.